Hello, everyone. Today, we are reading Cherries and Cherry Pits. Cherries and Cherry Pits. Hi, Weebo. Good morning. He's listening, too. Bademi lives on the floor above me. We visit back and forth a lot. But Demi loves to draw, so when she opens the door, I'm often standing there with a marker of some kind of color she doesn't have yet. There's Bademi. She always tries a new marker right away. First, she makes a dot on the paper. Then she draws a line out from that dot. As she draws, she tells the story of what she is drawing. She always starts with the word this. This is the door to the subway. This is the door to the subway. And this is a man leaning on the door. I hope he doesn't fall out when the door, the door opens all of a sudden. His face is a nice face, but it is also not so nice. He has a fat wrinkle on his forehead. It's like my mama's wrinkle. It's from worrying and worrying my mama says, and his neck is thick and his arms are thick with very big, strong muscles. His shirt is striped blue and white and his skin is dark brown. And in his great big hands, he has a small white bag. The man looks so strong, I think he could even carry a piano on his head. But he is only carrying this little white bag. I wonder what can be in that little white bag. I can just see the man going home to his house and walking up his stairs and opening the door to his living room. His living room has a pretty lamp and he switches it right on. His kids are in the kitchen. Dee Dee, Dennis, Dwayne, Dory, he calls. I got something here for you. Then they come out. One sits on one of his legs and one on the other. One leans right in between. And Dee Dee, she climbs round and back and leans over his shoulder. Then he opens the bag and pulls out a cherry. He puts one cherry in each of their mouths and another and another and another. Really, red cherries too. And they sit there eating the cherries and spitting out the pits. Eating cherries and spitting out the pits. And before you can even ask Padimi any questions about the story, such as, how come the names of all the man's children begin with D? She has another piece of paper ready and is drawing again. This is the train sheet, and this is a tiny white woman sitting on the train. She is almost as short as I am, but she is a grandma. On her head is a black hat with a pink flower, like a rose flower. It has shiny green leaves, like the leaves in my uncle's florist shop. On her feet are old, old shoes. These are the buckles, and in her lap is a big black pocketbook. And in the pocketbook is a bag. There she is drawing. You can't really see the bag, but I'll draw it anyway, so you can be sure it's there. What's that? That's the little lady sitting on the train. She's got her black handbag, and in the bag is a little brown paper bag, all twisted up tight. When this woman gets off the train, I know just where she's going. Where's she going? Where is she going? There's Badimi drawing. She's going to hold tight onto the banister and go up the stairs. She's going to hold onto the wall as she walks along the street. What's that? She's waving to a man in the store. And the door to her house is going to be right next to the shoemaker's store. She really likes to hear the shoemaker's machine going round and round and round and his hammer going tap, tap, tap. She waves to him when she goes by his window. Then she climbs up the stairs and opens the door. <gasps> There's just one room in her, in her house. It has everything she needs. This is the sink, and here's the geranium plant on the window. And on the swing over the plant is her parrot. The parrot is so excited to hear her coming in the house. He is calling, little lady, little lady. The parrot is red and yellow and green. It's blue, too. Whoa. 
I brought something for you, the little woman tells the parrot. She untwists that little brown bag all twisted up tight. She holds it out to the parrot, and the parrot takes out a cherry. It's the kind that is light red and sour. The parrot eats it right up. You like it, asks the lady. You like cherries, honey bird? She laughs and dumps all the cherries onto the geranium plant in front of the parrot. There's your own little cherry tree. She stands next to the geranium in her stocking feet, eating cherries with the parrot. The parrot is careful to spit out the pits. And they are both eating cherries and spitting out the pits. Why? Eating cherries and spitting out the pits. Why? You don't eat the seed, the pit, and the cherry. You eat up the outside and then you spit out the inside. I want to ask Badimi some questions, such as if she is sure the parrot spit out the pits, but she is already remembering a certain shoelace and a shoe. This is a shoelace and this is a running shoe. It's going to and be purple. My running shoes. You have running shoes too. This running shoe is going to be purple and white. And here's the other one to match. This is going to be a boy. These are his long legs. This boy looks a lot like my brother. He is holding on to the straps in the subway. The train is making him rock back and forth. And he's reading the signs. My brother loves to read. And this boy is tall like my brother. And he has glasses like my brother. And the same kind of letters from his team on his jacket. And when he smiles... Hold on, Tova. Oh, sorry. One second. <laughs> ah! And when he smiles, you can see the space between his big front teeth like my brother's. And in his pocket is a present. Well, when he gets off the train at the station, he just runs right up the escalator. He runs right along the streets, jumping on and off the stoops to his house. Before he even gets up the stairs, and he can take them in just two steps, he's hollering to his little sister, Hey, come on out here. See what I got for you. What's like and before she can even look out the window, he'll be right in the room in front of her. Wreck he'll make it. her choose which hand. Wreck it. And there'll be a cherry in that closed up hand. And it will be the big kind. Such a dark Wreck red. It. It's um, it. Yeah. Wreck that's a couch. A dark red. It's almost black. His little sister will grab it and eat it up while he yells, Don't forget to spit out the pit. <gasps> Is that a story about you, I ask? No, she says, but this one is going to be about me. And she draws herself in her favorite beret hat. It's pink. This is me, and this is my station. I have to walk up the stairs one at a time. There you go. So the bright sun that is out here in the sky won't make my eyes hurt. But right here on the street, what do you think there is going to be? A man is selling cherries from the back of his truck. His whole truck is going to be cherries. Nothing but cherries. Now see this little purse? I have a little purse in my pocket with some money Mama gave me. And when I show it to the man, he puts a bag on the scale and puts in some cherries. But then he goes ahead and fills it right up to the top and gives it to me. Don't eat them all too fast, he tells me. Now, what does that man think? <laughs> Hi, little foot. I wasn't going to eat them up fast because I had an important plan. I walk home eating the cherries one by one and saving the pits. Eating a cherry and saving the pit. I put every one of my pits in my pocket. And when I get to my street, I take them all out. I kneel right down and I poke one in the ground on the edge of our yard. Our yard is a junky old yard. It has this stump where there used to be a tree, but that tree died and they came and cut it down and took it away. Then I poke pits in the ground all over the place. I know if I plant enough of them, at least one will grow. I pat the ground smooth. I pour some water on each pit and I tell those pits to grow, grow, grow. Grow, grow, grow. Now, do you want to see how they grow? Badimi asked me. But she doesn't wait for an answer. 
She is busy laying out all her newest markers, the green, the pink, the red, the purple, the brown, the black, and all the others. She piles up all the papers from the other stories and places a clean sheet on top. Now watch, she says. This is the pit right here in the middle. And this is how it grows. First, it makes a little sprout that grows up. Then it makes a little root that grows down. Then that root makes roots till the ground is full of roots to hear. The sprout grows up to be a little trunk, and branches grow out from the trunk. And from those branches, littler branches grow up into the part that is sky. The branches have dark pink buds on them, and the buds open up to be light pink flowers. Then come light green leaves, but it seems like there are never going to be any cherries. Everyone is always asking, but Demi, when in the world are those cherries ever going to be ready to eat? And all the time, cherries will be growing right under these leaves. Almost done, Tova. So tiny and green, look, she's chasing away the birds like a scarecrow. So tiny and green, no one even notices them. Yes. But I work hard. Yes. I come out every single day to chase away the blue jays that are trying to steal the cherries. I chase away the dogs that try to use the yard for their business. And the kids who try to carve initials on the tree. Then one day I come out and the cherries are ripe. There are so many cherries. The branches reach right down to the ground. There are red cherries and dark red cherries and cherries such a deep red they are almost black. Look at all the cherries. Then the people come out the back door and the front door and down the steps. There are enough cherries for every single one of them and even for their friends who come down in these airplanes. So here we all are standing in front of the airplanes, eating cherries and spitting out the pits, eating cherries and spitting out the pits till we all fall down from eating so many cherries and spitting out the pits. Hmm, they look so happy. This cherry pit, and this cherry pit. What is this? And the cherry pits start to grow, a little what's, cherry tree. What's that? Until there is a whole. What's that? It's a little cherry tree. Until there is a whole forest of cherry trees right on our block. The end. It kind of looks like a lollipop, but it's a little tiny cherry tree. All done. I can't wait till we can start eating cherries and spitting out the pits. And that was Cherries and Cherry Pits by Vera B. Williams. We miss you. Love ya. Bye.